Welcome to Work Life by Design. I'm your host, Mel Marsden. If the last few years have taught us anything, it's that change is inevitable and we no longer need to go to work to work. As a workplace dynamic strategist and the founder of Community, I draw back the curtains on my own business, the clients and projects that we deliver, along with tapping into the knowledge and insights from academics, business leaders and champions of change. I believe that our environments have the power to positively influence our behaviour and performance, inspiring our human potential. This program was made possible with the support from the Alastair Swain Foundation. To find out more, go to alastairswainfoundation.org. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Work Life by Design. Now, last time I had the pleasure of chatting with you on a solo episode, we were talking about how to create an empathy map. And an empathy map is really about how we want to guide and elevate that experience for our people when they're coming to the workplace. So how can we think about what we want them to see, what we want them to think and feel, what we want them to do, and what we want them to be hearing? And so when we think about that, we can actually go and consciously create that experience for our people when we plan out those particular steps. So today I want to take that a step forward and I want to start talking about creating a journey map. And an employee journey map is really just about curating that employee journey throughout your workplace and how we can then start to elevate that entire experience that they're having of coming into the workplace. Now, we all know that we've had the terms earn the commute and we've got to get people back into our workplaces, but what is going to entice and attract them is not going to be the same things that we were providing to our people in a post-pandemic world. So our workplaces need to take a completely different step up and we need to be providing very different spaces for our people so that they can experience work in a different way, that they can work in a different way, that they can interact in a completely different way. Now, if we think about what our employee journey looks like when we're thinking about what it's like to come to work, it actually starts well before they enter the workplace. It actually starts at home. So we need to be really thinking about where even our workplace is located because what does that commute look like for our people? Is it something that's easy? Can they catch the train? Is there car parking? Is there some way that they can actively commute to work? So whether they're running or cycling, what are those particular ways that we can access our workplace and how can we do it safely? And then what facilities are there at the other end to support that transition then into their workday? So these are just some of the factors that we need to be thinking about when we're plotting all these points on our journey map and it starts well before they even get to the building. So we can start to think about what are some of the touch points that are going to guide your employees' experience throughout the day. So we've already spoken about one, and the first one is the commute. What does that look like and how are they getting to the office? Is there public transport? Is there highway corridors? Is there bikeways? What are those ways of accessing the actual work environment? Then we want to think about what it's like when they're actually arriving at work. You know, are there parking facilities? Are there outdoor spaces? Is there somewhere for them to be able to store their bike safely if they rode into work? And then we want to think about what it's like for them entering the building. So do we have inter-trip facilities? Is there somewhere for them to grab a coffee on the way through the door? What is that experience of transitioning through the base building, entering into the space going through the foyer, up in the lift, what does that actual transition journey look like as well? So all of these are actual touch points that we need to be plotting out before we've even started thinking about what our physical workplace actually needs to look like. And when we're doing this, we want to be actually thinking about every sequential event that is going to happen throughout the course of the day, because we want to be encouraging and we want to be designing and actually influencing the way that our people are experiencing each of those individual spaces. So if we're thinking about from there, we've actually then got up to our floor, we're entering into our work area. What is the first thing that we want people to do? Do we want them to go to their locker and grab their gear from there? Do we want them to grab a coffee? Do we want them to socialize with their colleagues? Do we want them engaging in some, you know, really collaborative and enticing conversation? Or do we want them diving straight into their work for the day? These are all ways that we can start to guide that employee journey through your work environment by thinking about what are those touch points. Now, when we're doing that, I want you to think about three questions. Now, these three questions are going to guide your experience that you're going to be creating for your employees at each of these touch points. Now, the first question is, what is the journey that you want to guide your people through? So a great way to start thinking about this is sit down and map out your own day. 
what are all the touch points that you experience in the course of your day and the workflows that you go through to get your job done? Now, think about some of those friction points that you're encountering as you are doing that. What are ways that you could redesign that? How could you shift that workflow or that experience and that journey so that it was more positive for you individually? Now, once you've done that, think about how that looks for some of your team. Do they have very similar workflows to you? Do they have a similar journey throughout the workplace each day? Or is it slightly different? So once you're thinking about what are the touch points that your people are experiencing and then how would you like to consciously change that or co-create that with them so that they're getting a much more positive experience of their journey through the workplace each and every day. Now, the second question that I want you asking yourself is what experiences do you want them to have at each touch point? So if you think about what is the experience that you want each of your employees to have at each of those particular touch points, and I'm going to dive into some examples in just a moment for those. And the third thing I want you to think about is how do you want them to feel in each of those moments? Are you ready to transform your workplace and inspire the human potential in your business? Then why not book in a complimentary strategy call with me? We'll uncover where you are and where you want to be and the opportunity that lay before you to ensure that you are preparing your workplace to adapt to any future. Just head over to my website, melissamarsden.com.au or to the link in the show notes to book in your call. I look forward to chatting with you soon. So then what are some of the ways that we actively want to influence the way that they experience these touch points? Let's go back to our commute. So if we think about how we want them to feel in this moment, Perhaps we want them to feel safe, we want them to feel energized, and we want them to feel active. So that's why we think about, well, we want to have our workplace somewhere on a bikeway, and we want the building then to have secure bike storage so that when they get to the space, they've actually got somewhere to store their belongings and they feel safe about doing so. Then if they've actively commuted in, they've ridden their bike in, they're probably going to be a bit hot and sweaty, they're going to need to use the end of trip facilities. So when we get them to that space, what do we want them to feel there? Well, perhaps we want them to feel relaxed. We want them to feel refreshed and we want them to feel calm so that they're ready to go and start their day. So in order to do that, what are some ways that we could actually influence that experience to get them to feel in that particular way? And some of the ideas that we've got here is perhaps we've got really clean, modern facilities. So if we're going out and looking for a new space for our workplace, these are some of the things that we might be considering. Do we have really nice, new, fresh, modern end of trip facilities? Do we have a towel service so they're not having to bring their own towel or then store it during the day, which could then be wet and smelly in their locker? So we've got a towel service that keeps all of their towels nice and fresh. Perhaps we're providing complimentary toiletries. You know, think about it in terms of a hospitality or a hotel experience. When you go in there, you've got all your little minis or you've got them mounted in the shower. Think about how you could be providing that and making this as frictionless and as seamless and as enjoyable as possible for your employees. So you're setting them up so that they're starting their day on the best foot. They've got secure lockers so that they can put their gym gear away, they can store their smelly shoes, their cycling gear that they've come in in, and it's all there nice and secure throughout the course of the day. Perhaps we've got some air diffusers in there so that we are then giving them a really lovely essential oil smell to then treat their senses as they're getting ready in the morning. We're providing with hair dryers, hair straighteners, any of the other equipment that they might need to actually prepare themselves for the day. And then perhaps we've got an iron, we've got some steaming equipment there so that we can actually then prepare our clothes so that if they've got crumpled in our bag on the way in, we can get them nice and fresh as well and we can go out looking our best to get the day started. Perhaps there's even washing and drying facilities there so that, you know, if we've got rained on on the way in to work this morning, that we can get those dry so that we can then go home in nice dry clothes. So they're just some of the ways that you can start to think about how you want your people to feel and experience each of those touch points and what some of the ways are that you can then influence that experience by the way that you provide or consider the experience of that space by what you provide for your employees. 
Now, this is an exercise that you might want to repeat multiple times depending on the size of your organization. You've got different departments, different teams who are all working differently. You might consider those who are driving to work or those who are cycling or other modes of transport to get to the office each and every day. So just thinking about how those touch points could be different for the different people across your organization and how you can then actively influence those experiences to be more positive for your employees so that you're getting them energized and excited and ready to kick off and go throughout their day. Now, of course, if you are creating a new workplace from scratch, you're going to have far more flexibility in this. You're actually going to be able to choose where your workplace goes or actively consider that in your decision-making process. You can think about that transition. You can choose the type of building that you're looking at going into and the quality of the end of trip facilities, what that ground floor foyer looks like, what that security experience is as people actually transition into the building before you've even gone about starting to design your individual workplace for your organization. However, If you are already in a workplace, uh, your lease expiry is miles down the road and you don't have that opportunity to go and start from scratch, there are still many ways that you can start to influence the experience for your people at each of those different touch points. So thinking about what are some of those sensory experiences that you can influence? How does it smell when you come into the workplace? What is they, what are they hearing? Like how do we influence with introducing some music or if you're finding it quite noisy in the environment, maybe we introduce some white noise. So there's all different ways that we can start to influence that you know the quality of the tea and coffee in the kitchen all of these things can start to help change the way that your people actually experience each of these touch points in your workplace and can elevate that entire employee experience The other way that you can start to influence your experience of work at each of these touch points is really infusing the brand. How are we actually getting our brand experience to show up in that work environment? And how can you then start to influence that and embed that into each of these touch points as they move throughout their day? Now, I outline this entire process in its entirety in my book, The Next Workplace, Designing Dynamic Environments that Inspire Human Potential. And I also share with you many other tools and resources in there as well so that you can start to integrate as much of this into your workplace as possible. And the book has really been designed and written so that you can start to take the concepts of modern day management theory and embed those into your physical workplace. Often there's a really big disconnect. People go, I know exactly what my mandate is as a people and culture leader, as a business leader, as the CEO, but I don't know how to then actually translate that into the physical work environment. So this book helps you connect those dots. It helps you understand what are you trying to do from an employee experience perspective, as a brand, the culture of your organization and then what you can do with your physical environment to actually reinforce those behaviors and set your people up for success and deliver returns for your business. So if you haven't already got yourself a copy of my book, head over to the website, melissamarsden.com.au forward slash book, and you can grab your copy there. Thanks so much for joining me again this week. And I look forward to chatting with you again next week.